they're not quite following the format I asked them to do. Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is part one of the Unit 2 section on macromolecules. And in part one, we're going to look at the difference between monomers and polymers in a really general sense. And then in parts two, three, and four, we're going to look at three different groups of polymers. You probably have heard of carbohydrates but, and proteins. Lipids may be new to you. And finally, in part five, we're going to look at a special type of proteins called enzymes. Now, the first idea we need to cover here is what exactly is a monomer. And in biology, a monomer is a little piece of something. So we could have monomers that look like this. We could have monomers that look like this. We could have monomers that look like this. But what makes them monomers is they're individual pieces. All right. Now, if you want to turn them into a polymer, what you do is you hook them together. So if I bonded this one to this one, this one to this one, and this one to this one, I have what's now known as a polymer. And so we could say this polymer is made up of the square monomers. And I could do the same thing here. I could hook up this one and this one. And we could say now this is a polymer made up of circular shaped monomers. And finally, for triangles, I think you guys get the point. But you make polymers by hooking together monomers. And one of the things in biology that is pretty important to remember is that every group of organic molecules has its own special monomer that builds that group of polymers. So for example, one group of polymers are called carbs, and they're built of a certain type of monomer. All right, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, lipids are another kind of polymer, and they're built from their own special kind of monomer. And finally, we have proteins. Okay, And proteins are polymers built from their own special kind of monomer. So you don't mix and match them. That's the idea here. Now, all living matter, uh, your body, for example, or the body of a plant or tree, is made up of a subset of the periodic table. Um, we can call them C-H-O-N-P-S. All right, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And these elements are the ones that make up the vast majority of the mass of living things, or what we call biomass, or what we may call organic. Okay, so organic material, or biomass. Okay, these are both ways of expressing the same idea, the mass of living material. Now, most of our bodies mass is made up of water, and of course water is H2O. So that means about two-thirds, you know, 70-75% of the mass of our bodies is made up of water. The other remaining smaller percentage is made up of the other elements in that C-H-O-N-S-P um, acronym we learned before. So carbon is special, and carbon gets its own branch of chemistry called organic chemistry. So organic chemistry is the branch of chemistry it focuses on the chemicals that contain carbon, all right? Especially things that contain carbon bonded to carbon or carbon bonded to carbon bonded to hydrogens, all right? And so we'll, we'll explore this more in the, in the next few slides. Now carbon molecules, or excuse me, carbon atoms literally form the backbone or the main structure of all organic molecules. And organic molecules, by definition, must contain carbon. So what we mean here is that if you build an organic molecule, it's going to have, at its core, carbons hooked to carbons. All right? Now, these carbons could be hooked to other things, all right, which would turn this into different types of chemicals. But the important thing is all organic molecules, by being organic, contain carbons bound to carbons. Now, a carbon molecule, okay, excuse me, a carbon atom, Okay, that this black sphere represents a carbon atom, always is going to form four covalent bonds. One, two, three, four. Okay, these are covalent bonds, and they're not polar. They're just regular covalent bonds. And carbon always has to have four covalent bonds. Uh, this is one of the properties of carbon that makes it interesting. Because if you can hold hands, so to speak, with four different things, there is a huge variety of molecules that you can build in organic chemistry. So, for example, if all of these were hydrogens, okay, then we would build something called CH4, which is the simplest organic compound you can have, and that is natural gas, otherwise known as methane. All right, so... Let's look at some examples of this. Um, again, this is what we just drew, but here's it 
typed out for you. CH4 is a chemical called methane. It's a flammable gas that um, most people use in their houses to um, produce heat, cook food, stuff like that. Now, carbons can be hooked together to other carbons, and when you do this, you build molecules called hydrocarbons. All right. So we're going to we're going to look at some simple hydrocarbons here. Here's methane, which we've already looked at. Methane is CH4. Okay, one carbon bound to one, two, three, four hydrogens. The next biggest hydrocarbon is ethane, and ethane is C2H6. And you'll notice carbon bonded to carbon, and then each of these has three more bonds that we have to fill up. So that is ethane. And the next one is going to be propane. You probably heard of propane. It's a, frequently sold as a bottled gas to run propane grills. Uh, this would be C3. H, well, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. C3, H8. And finally, butane, which is four carbons bound together, starting to look more like a backbone here. And this will be C4, H, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. H10. So do you guys see a pattern here? CH4, C2, H6, uh, C3, H8. See how they're going? One, two, three, and then four, six, eight. There actually is a pattern here to what we call hydrocarbons. All right, carbons can also form rings with double bonds. It can get very, very interesting here. I think it's a particularly nice looking. This is a, um, a molecule of benzene. Don't see this very much anymore because it's, it's a nasty chemical to breathe. But this has a C6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, C6, H6. And you can see why we don't have as many hydrogens as we did before because some of the carbons have double covalent bonds. So this carbon right here is double bound to this carbon right here. So each carbon still has its four bonds. So 1, 2, 3, 4 for that one. 1, 2, 3, 4 for that one, and so on. So remember, each carbon has to have four bonds. And as long as each carbon has four bonds, you can hook it together in so many different ways, it boggles the mind. So what I want you guys to try in your notebooks, how many different molecules can you build from five carbons using as many hydrogens as you need? How many different shapes of molecules can you do with that? Play around with it, see what you can come up with. Now, organic molecules can get very big and very complicated. And this ability or power of carbon to build such a huge diversity of organic molecules is one of the secrets of organic chemistry. And of course, organic chemistry is where biology comes from. And we're going to talk about four different kinds of organic molecules in this unit. We're going to talk about carbohydrates and proteins, which you probably have heard about in foods, lipids, which you also have heard about. They're also known as oils and fats. And finally, the last group, nucleic acids, which are DNA and RNA. All right, so that's our goal. Now, can you guys remember what are the four categories of organic macromolecules found inside of living cells? I just listed them. Can you write them out now in your notebook? These macromolecules are um, absolutely critical to the structure and function of living cells. And each of these macromolecules, or polymers, are built from their own specific monomer. Remember the first thing that we looked at when we started this PowerPoint. Uh, monomers are like building blocks. You can think of them as being like Legos. And each macromolecule uses its own set of monomers. So if you want to build carbohydrates, for example, you have to use a monomer called simple sugars. If you want to build lipids, you've got to build monomers called fatty acids and glycerols. If you want to build proteins, you've got to hook together monomers called amino acids. And finally, if you want to build nucleic acids, you have to bond together monomers called nucleotides. So to build these, you need these. Now, the way you hook monomers together is you use a process called dehydration synthesis. And we're going to pick this up in the next videocast. Thanks for listening.